Along with quality food and pleasant surroundings, one of the things that makes a restaurant succeed and grow is cleanliness. Nothing says quality to your customer more clearly than spotlessly clean dishes, glasses, and silverware. And nothing turns a customer off faster than tableware that is water spotted or food stained. To make sure all tableware is sparkling clean, your management has invested in the best commercial dishwashing system available. The C-Line Automatic Rack Conveyor Dishwasher from the Hobart Corporation. Properly operated, these machines do a superior cleaning job and make your job easier. The machine you will be using, the model CRS-66, is easy to operate and keep clean. In the next few minutes, You'll learn how to keep it running smoothly. You will learn how to set up the CR-66 at the beginning of your shift and how to properly load the racks. You will also learn how to properly shut down the CRS-66 wear washer and clean the unit when you are finished using it and how to perform minor troubleshooting and maintenance procedures. Let's begin with the setup procedures. First, Make sure all strainers and internal covers are in place. Put the deflector pan in the wash tank right next to the scrapper section. Then put in two of the strainer covers. Next, put in the solid metal cover. And finally, Put in the last two strainer covers. In the scrapper section, make sure the overflow cap is in place. Install the solid metal pan, then the strainer pan. Then put the strainer basket into the pre-washed tank strainer and install the tank cover. The next step is to hang the curtains. There are four curtains on the CRS-66. One short curtain and three long curtains. The long curtains hang between the pre-wash and the wash zone, between the wash zone and the final rinse zone, and at the discharge end. The short curtain goes here, at the entrance to the pre-wash zone. Hang the curtains on the hooks provided. Before you can fill the CRS-66 with water, you must close the drain in the wash section and in the scrapper section. Next, close the access doors. To close the doors, lift slightly, release the latch, then gently lower the door. You are now ready to fill the machine with water. If your machine has automatic fill, turn the autofill control to on. The autofill switch will automatically turn off the water supply to the machine when the tank is full. If your machine is a manual fill, you need to open the manual fill valve to fill the machine. Once the machine is full, you must close the manual fill valve. There are three ways you can tell if the machine is full. First, you can listen for the water going out the drain pipe. Or you can time the filling operation. At the recommended water pressure, it takes about four to five minutes to fill the tank. And finally, you can visually check the water level. To do so, lift the pre-wash tank cover. When the machine is full, the water should reach the top shelf of the scrap basket. Once the machine is full of water, turn the heat switch to on. There are two different models of the CRS-66 wear washer, a low temperature model and a high temperature model. The wash temperature for a low temperature model must be 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The wash temperature on a high temperature model must be 160 degrees. 
When the wash temperature reaches the proper level, you are ready to start washing dishes. But before we start, let's review what we have covered so far. Now check the detergent level in the container. On models with manual detergent feed, check with your supervisor for proper instructions. You may have an automatic detergent dispenser. On many automatic detergent dispensers, an alarm will sound if the proper amount of detergent is not being dispensed. If you hear the alarm, which is usually a continuous buzzing or beeping sound, check with your supervisor. In either case, manual, or automatic detergent dispensing. Follow the instructions given by your detergent supplier. When the water reaches the proper operating temperature, turn the pump switch to on. If your machine does not have the auto timer option, the pump will now be running. If your machine is equipped with the auto timer, the timer may have timed out and the pump will not run. To start the pump, push a rack of soiled dishes into the machine. The rack trips a switch at the entrance of the machine. Tripping the switch resets the timer and starts the pump automatically. The timer will automatically turn off the pump after the rack passes through the machine. There are several different types of racks which can be used in the CRS-66. For proper cleaning, Use the correct rack for the items you are washing. To wash dishes, stack them on edge in a plate rack with the flat surface facing toward you. For silverware, scatter it loosely in an open rack. Remember, the water and detergent must be able to flow over all the silverware. Silverware may also be washed in silverware baskets. For best results, Silverware should be soaked before running it through the CRS-66 wear washer. Use a glass rack for glasses and a cup rack for cups. When a rack is full, slide it into the load side of the wear washer. The wear washer is automatic. When the rack of dishes is finished, it will move out into the clean dish area. On high temperature models, it is important to note, as racks pass through the final rinse zone, that the rinse water temperature must read at least 180 degrees, but not over 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Let the racks of clean dishes drain and air dry before you unload them. At the end of each day of operation, you should clean the CRS-66 wear washer, and this is a very easy job. To clean the machine, first turn off the heat switch, then the pump switch, open the access doors, and remove all curtains. Check the upper and lower final rinse arms. Make sure none of the nozzles are clogged. Also check the wash arms to see if they may be clogged. We will show you how to remove wash arm clogs in the troubleshooting section of this program. Scrub and rinse the curtains. With all strainers still in place, wash down debris from the tables into the CRS-66. Next, remove the strainer pans and the pre-wash strainer basket. Empty them into a trash container and wash them. Remove the overflow cap. Clean it 
and then replace it. Open the drains. Then wash out the inside of the machine with a hose and scrub brush. Make sure you clean the bottom of the tanks. Once the tanks are clean, you should replace the strainer pans and strainer baskets. Leave the curtains off and the doors open so the inside of the wear washer can dry. The CRF-66 is now ready for the next working shift. But before we go on to the section on troubleshooting, take a few minutes and go over to the CRF-66 wear washer and practice the setup and operation procedures. The CRS-66 wear washer is designed for easy, trouble-free operation. As an operator, you should be aware that problems may occur when operating this machine. Here are a few things you should check before you call a repair person. The first problem we will look at is the machine will not run. First, check to make sure all the inspection doors are completely closed. Each door has an interlock switch that will stop the machine or prevent it from operating if the doors are open. Another cause may be a blown fuse or a tripped circuit breaker. Check with your supervisor if you suspect this to be the problem. If your machine is equipped with an auto timer, the timer may have expired. Slide a rack into the machine and it will restart the auto timer. The second problem we will talk about is when the dishes do not come out clean. The most common cause of this is improper loading or overloading of the racks. Dishware should be properly loaded into the racks. This enables the water and detergent to flow freely over the tableware. Another common cause of improperly clean dishes may be that the dishes sat too long before they were washed. If food has dried on the dishes, it may take repeated washings to get them clean. Wash dishes quickly to avoid having food scraps dry onto them. Dirty dishes may also be a result of a low water level in the tanks. This causes improper spray patterns. To check the water level, just turn off the pump switch, then turn the heat switch to off, and open the access doors to inspect the water level. The water level should reach to the bottom of the strainer pan in the wash tank. If you are not sure, lift out the strainer pan and check the water level. If the tank is less than two-thirds full, there is not enough water to properly wash dishes. Check the water level in the pre-wash tank by removing the pre-wash bucket cover. The water should be to the top of the basket. You must find the cause of the low water situation and then correct it. The first thing to check is to make sure the drain handles are all the way in the shut position. If that was the problem, simply shut the drain, refill the machine, and continue normal operation. If the drain handle was not the problem, you should next check if the overflow cap or cover is in place. If the cap is not properly in place, too much water will drain out, causing the low water problem. If the cap is properly in place, the next cause you should check is a drain obstruction. Something like a toothpick or small bone may prevent the drain from closing properly. Completely drain the low tank. It is possible that the obstruction will be flushed down the drain so you may not find anything. Next, check that the O-ring on the drain plug is in place and is not worn or torn. You must have a good O-ring for proper drain sealing. We have looked at solutions to low water problems. But what if the water level is okay and you are still getting dirty dishes? You may not be getting the proper spray patterns from the wash arms. This is what a proper spray pattern should look like in the wash zone. 
You may need to temporarily remove the curtain in order to observe the spray pattern. Warning, never put any part of your body into the wear washer while it is operating. An improper spray pattern like this one could be caused by missing end caps or by a blocked nozzle. If the end caps are missing, you must replace them. If the wash nozzles are clogged, you must remove the wash arms. First, make sure the heat and pump switches are in the off position. To remove the wash arms, release the clamp and lift out. Take the wash arms to a sink for cleaning. Remove all the end caps. Using a table knife or a similar object, push out the obstruction. Thoroughly flush out the arms in the sink. Replace all the end caps, then install the wash arm back into the machine. Make sure you lock all the clamps. You should now have a proper spray pattern. Another cause of dirty dishes could be water temperature that is too low. The proper temperature for your machine model is printed on the thermometer housing. The CR66 is equipped with a low water protector. This device shuts off the heat source if the water level in the tank drops too low. If you have a water temperature problem, check to see if the water in the wash tank is at the correct level. If debris accumulates on the float portion of the protector, this will also prevent the heat source from coming on. In this case, turn off the pump and heat switches, drain the tank, and remove the debris from the float. Then refill the tank. The final reason your dishes may be coming out dirty is incorrect detergent dispensing. In this case, contact your detergent representative. Remember, you can't wash dishes without detergent. The Hobart CRS66 dishwasher is easy to use, easy to maintain, and if you follow the proper procedures, your customers will enjoy perfectly clean dishes every time.